forget anything? Oh, uh, the work orders. I left them in my desk and an envelope. I'll go. You don't have to go back, Willard. I sweat blood to get those accounts, Willard. You sit on them, we lose them. Yes, I know, Mr. Martin. I know, Mr. Martin. I want to see these Monday morning at 9 a.m. And I mean 9 a.m. Tonight, you were born in pain and suffering. You know, they didn't think that I would live. Oh, oh well, then, give your mother a birthday kiss. Oh. 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 Nice that all our friends came to your birthday party. Happy birthday, Willard. Happy birthday. Oh, Such yes. a sweet boy, and he was so surprised. <laughs> and right, dear. Now, now, here is the cake. Oh, thank you. Now, Charlotte made it for your birthday, dear. <laughs> Charlotte, let Willard do it. Oh. Uh, Willard, take off the cover. Oh. Oh. Hey. Uh, cut it, Willard. Go and cut it. Oh, where's the knife? Here you go. There. Go oh, and cut it. Oh, oh, make a wish. Is Mr. Martin coming to the party? Well, I invited him. Mother, you didn't invite Mr. Martin. Oh, of course I did, Willard. What's the matter with you, boy? Don't you want your boss to come to the party? It might do you some good to socialize with him, Willard. Let bygones be bygones. That way your boss will get to know you better, dear. She's right, Willard. Willard is basically an extrovert. Except it's all inside. That's right, dear. Your executive material, will Please, now this is my party. Let's... It's not easy to find a dedicated young man these days, is it, Charlotte? She's right, and it's time you became more aggressive, dear. If you're gonna make it in this world, you gotta learn to get tough. Tough, tough. Don't forget your style. Willard, a man's gotta speak up for himself in this world. You ought to be vice president. That's the least Martin can do after what he did to your father. Here's to the vice president. I can tell you this, if Willard had been older, Martin had never have been able to take over the business. Never. Martin take over the business? He stole it. Willard, if you'd just been a little tougher. Well, how could I? Willard, you don't want to be a cashier all your life.
happy birthday. Sorry, Mother. They're your friends, you know. They're only trying to help me. And you, too. And they're right about Martin, you know. We must keep him as a friend. And Martin should make you a vice president. Oh. Willard Stiles, vice president. Oh, Willard. <laughs> Willard. You don't talk to me anymore. Well, I try, Mother. Oh, well, sometimes I, I just don't understand you. Why, the, the whole house is falling apart. Oh, the shingles on the roof falling off. The TV doesn't work. Oh, uh, and the faucets in the kitchen are starting to leak again. Yesterday I saw, saw a rat in the yard. Uh, well, you're letting everything go. Well, well I'll, I'll put some washes in tomorrow. Oh, yes, uh, Willard, uh, the laundry faucets, they need, need new washers right. too, you know. All right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sometimes I think you're trying to, <laughs> to kill your mother. <laughs> Good night, breakfast. They're out by the rock garden there. Perhaps we should call an exterminator. Exterminators cost money. You can kill them with a stick. No! I never find them all. When are you going to talk to Martin about your job? I thought I told you I wanted to talk to you this morning at 9 a.m. Oh, I was just on my way to your office, Mr. Martin. It's 9.40. What's the matter? Well, I had a lot to do at home this morning, and I missed my bus. Oh, you missed the bus. Oh, well, do come in, Mr. Stiles. Why don't you get your hair cut? Well, come on, come on. Where are those invoices, boy? Oh, uh, I got most of them done. I'll, I'll get the rest uh, this morning. Oh. There are two departments in a company that have to work right. One of them is sales, and one of them is manufacturing. Now, you get a bottleneck in the middle, and orders don't get processed, or orders don't go out, and everything comes to a screeching halt, and I lose my shirt. 
Now, do you want me to lose my shirt, Willard? I'm going to tell you for the last time. Clean up your backlog of work. All of it. You hold up my sales department or even my shipping department one more time. Shut up, Willard! I don't buy that bit about you being overworked. I'm going to do you a favor. At my own expense, I brought in a temporary girl to help you clear up your desk. Now, I want and I am going to have a system around here. And if I don't get it, promise or no promise to your mother, I'm going to throw you out of here. Now, get moving. Do they always give you that much work to do? Uh, you can call me Joan, Mr. Stiles. Did you do it? Do what? Oh, Willard, you're driving me out of my mind. You want a little something to nibble on? I want you to come here. Did you kill the rats? Yes. I did it. I did it. They were uh, swimming around and around, you know, and I didn't think they were going to drown. You know, so I got a stick. It was your idea. And I came up on them, and I just, you know, kind of <laughs> like, like no, that. No, please don't. Oh, I, I don't want to hear about it. Jackson, Stanley, Margulis, Bannister, Kramer, Yant. That's all the additions to the list so far. Well, this seems to check out. Listen, we don't stop this. We're not going to get these work orders done. Oh, no. You got my invitation, Willard? Yes. This way you'll save a stamp. 
Make a hit with the boss. I'm coming. Thanks, Willard. It seems to me that Martin should have invited you to his party. Well, I'm not a customer. Her salesman. But after all, your family founded the company, didn't they? Yes, but that's the past, and this isn't the past. I'm glad I'm just a temporary. Mother, why did you call Charlotte instead of me? Well, you can't leave your work every time I call. And we have to have someone here to help. I'm afraid I'm going to be a lot of trouble to you. Now, I'll manage. Don't you worry. The only evidence my struggle with the world is you. I'm sorry to have been such a disappointment. You've always been a good boy, Willard. It's just that I'm alone here most of the time, and I worry so. What you need is a wife who will keep after you <laughs> all the time, who would, would help you in business. Oh, did you fix the shingles on the porch? Yes. Oh. I'm so sick of lying here without my TV. I'll fix it tomorrow. You're not in trouble with a girl, are you? Oh, oh, I, 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 I brought this for your mother. It'll give her strength. I heard you two talking. How is she, Willard? She's asleep. Oh. Well, I... Uh... I can put it in the refrigerator, and you can give it to her later, and I'll be off. But you remember now, you call me if you need me. Lesson time, Queenie. Come on. Come on, Queenie. Hi. Hi, Dave. Hi. Come on, it's lesson time. I know what the trouble is, Queenie. You don't know what speech is. You know I make noises, and I know you make noises, but I can't make any sense out of your noises, and you can't make any sense out of mine. So I'm going to try to teach you a new word. Food. 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 That's right, that's food. Empty. That's right, that's empty. You're learning.
Is he mine? Thank you. Call you um, Socrates. You like that? <laughs> I was in the back. I didn't hear you. What do you do there? Just sit. You can't just sit out back for an hour doing nothing. Yes, I can. I like it. It isn't good for you to sit out there alone and brood so much. What do you think about it? Oh, the pilot light is out on the heater again. I'll fix it. Will it? What's that in your pocket? There's something in your pocket. No, you're imagining things. No, I'm not. Turn around. I want to see. There's nothing to see. Hi, troops. You're not like some people. <laughs> Mr. Martin wants to see you now. <laughs> come in, come in. Close the door. Uh, 
I'm sorry. Brant said you wanted to see the Casey file. Uh, sit down, sit down. Sit down. You caught me in a closet with old Rickles, huh? <laughs> Come on, boy, loosen up. I was just doing the old broad a favor. Are you happy here? Well, I might be if I made some money. <laughs> You're not trying, Willard. <laughs> You're not trying at all. Hey. Hey. Are you putting the squeeze on... on me? <laughs> this is one for the books. Mr. Martin, uh, now I haven't had a raise since my father died. And I work weekends and I work nights. And what do you want from me? You need money? Sell the house. Well, we can't sell it. Of course you can. And I'm prepared to make you an offer. Now, look, that house is much too big for you. Or for, for me, too, for that matter. But I can afford it. Now, you haven't got a father and... Well, what do you say? You sell the house, you won't have to worry about a raise. Mr. Martin, with the, with the hours that I put in here, I... I think that Yeah, it's... no wonder. It takes you three times longer than it should. Well, I deserve a raise. Be glad you still got a job. Okay, forget it. You send out those invitations to my anniversary on time? Yes. When? A couple of weeks ago, I think. You think? You think? What do you mean, you think? Half of my customers haven't even answered. Hey. Look in your desk. I'll bet they're still in there. Look, it's tonight, you know. Oh, doesn't that interest you? You know something, Willard? You're a real pain in the tail. I carried your father on my back for years. And now I'm carrying you. Go on. Crawl out of here. Willard? $4,000, and he thought he was going to take me. <laughs> Go right in there. Oh, hi. Go in and have a drink. Enjoy yourself.
Anniversary. Must have been 200 of them. And <laughs> you should see the four starching the ranchy. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have seen this hero up on a chair squealing like a fag. I hope you're insured for the damage, Mr. Martin. From Willard's house. Oh. I think you better take it. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, 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 all right. Uh, let me have those clearance papers. Uh, three shipments didn't clear customs. I made a note. Yeah, okay. Look, you better go on home. Your mother's sick. Well, go on. Go on home. Who called? Well, how do I know? Some Charlotte or somebody. Go on. Beat it. What's wrong with my mother? Has the doctor been here yet? Do you have to move my mother without my permission? Well, I tried to get you to the office. Didn't Mr. Martin tell you? They said you'd gone to the customs house. And I called you over there, but they couldn't reach you. Where is she? Your mother's in heaven, dear. And Mr. Farley has the body. She's out of her misery, poor thing. Oh, how she loved you, Willard. Your mother asked me to take care of you. Oh, how she loved you, Willard. I know my mother loved me. You don't have to keep telling me that. We'll have to call Mr. Farley later about the arrangements. 
Bowers can come from the Stewarts. And we can call Reverend Pasco. He can help. Willard, you don't know how much there is to do. You're, you're upset and nervous. Of course you are. You and your mother were so close. After this is over, you should take a week off. Take a rest. That's what you need, Willard, a rest. And a chance to decide what you're going to do with your life now that your mother's gone. Get out. Just get out. You, you leave me alone. I'll take care of my mother. You get out. Get out. You just get out. Come on, we have a lot to do. I don't want to seem precipitous, Willard, but there are a few things about your mother's estate you should know right away. Your mother left everything to you. The house, the clothes, everything. Oh, what about money? Did she leave any money? Well, your mother was living on a small annuity. Unfortunately, it died with her. You mean she left me nothing? Not much. Just the equity on the house. Well, you could sell it and pay off the mortgage. Buy yourself a small house somewhere else. Have something left over for the future. Mortgage? Mort yes, Willard. It's heavily mortgaged. You mean my mother didn't leave me any money? Just this. It's a check for $1,500. It's an insurance check. I took the liberty of getting it. I thought you might need it to take care of your moving. Well, I, I won't be moving, Mr. Carlson. I'm not going to sell the house. Thank, thank you for the check. Let me help you with that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, you should be home by now. We brought a little food, dear. Poor boy. Willard. Willard. You poor dear. Tough luck, Willard. Thank you. Thank you. If you need any help with your financial problems, you just call old dad and we'll talk, huh? I will. That's a real beauty, boy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Moons and everything. <laughs> I always wanted to take one of these apart. Now, you two boys, come on in and have something to eat. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, sir. Don't you forget what I want to tell you.
Big day today. We're moving to the cellar. Ben? Hi. Well, you sure get into places, don't you? Look, who's here? It's uh, food and water. Willard! Socrates, you wait here. But now, 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 Willard. I, I, I know you're upset, Willard. But your mother died in my arms. And I made a promise to her that I'd take care of you. And I want to keep that promise, Willard. Get those keys. I found them in your room, my dear, dear. Now, this house is no place for a young man to be living alone. I've been talking to Mr. Farley. I want them. What? Give me the keys. Your mother gave me these keys. Give me those keys. Willard, if you shot at me, I'll never step foot in this house again. You are not my mother, and I don't want you to come here anymore. And I don't want your advice about the house. And I can take care of myself. Now, give me the keys. Get back. Come on, now, get back. Now, ben, now, stop it. I want you to stay here in the cellar where you belong. Now, stop it. Ben, now, stop it. Come on. Get back. Well, yeah, if you have to go, do it in the ashtray if you don't mind. If you don't mind. Ben, you're supposed to be in the cellar. Look, I can't have you all up here. I don't know how you guys get around. Socrates, I made a decision. You know how lonely I get for you at the office when I have to work late? Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take you to the office with me tomorrow. It's Saturday and nobody will be there in the afternoon. Hey, do you wanna take Ben? Okay, Ben, you can come too. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna have a big surprise tomorrow. Okay? Big surprise.
allow you boys to stay in here today. Nobody comes in here but me. I want you to be good. Don't worry. And have fun. And don't be nervous. Be careful. Okay? And I'll come back. And I'll get you before I leave. Okay? Have fun. Have a nice weekend, Willard. Thanks. Have a new car. A new car? Well, it's almost new. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I saw you coming in this morning. Oh. I'd take you home, but I have to stay here this afternoon. Oh, but it's Saturday. with your work? Just about. Oh, I have a surprise for you in your car. In my car? <laughs> okay, now close your eyes. name's Chloe. She's a present for you. I, I couldn't bear thinking of you all alone, Willard. And Well, cats are really very good company, especially girl cats. And Well, I saw her in the pet shop down the street when I was having lunch today. And, well, I couldn't resist getting her for you. Have you ever had a cat before? No. Um, well, why don't we drop her off by your house? I, I'd love to see it. I... Uh, we could go by there, uh, but I can't ask you in. We... It's too messy. Oh, all right. sell a house for taxes. Joan, do you mind if I take you right home? What are you going to do, Willard? About what? Well, about your house. I don't know. I don't have $2,500. I just have to think of somewhere to get it. <laughs> oh, I wish I could give it to you, Willard. I mean, you deserve that. Good call. Take care of Chloe. 
Oh, I'll take care of her, all right. You mind holding this just for a minute? Thank you. Each time I come down here, there's more of you. Now, now look, get this straight. Stop it. Now I am the boss here. I want you to stop it. can't afford it. Look, nothing. The mortgage is driving me nuts. And you're driving me nuts. You're worse than a bunch of rabbits. Dinner. Come on. Maybe the last one. Wait here till I get back. Willard, you came to apologize. I knew you would. You're your mother's boy. Is that the car you bought with the money she left you? Yes. I, I need some money for taxes. Uh, I came home and I found an, a notice for tax sale on the door. And if I don't pay it, they're going to take the house away from me. And I was wondering if you could help me. <laughs> Mortuary, Mr. Farley speaking. Yes, ma'am. Just a moment, please. B A R R Y. And the address, please. Yes, ma'am. Somebody will be over there within an hour. No office hours in this business, Willard. You have to be here when they want you, or they take their business somewhere else. Now, what were you saying? I thought maybe you could lend me the money so I could pay my taxes, and then you'd let me pay you back. Willard, what you're saying makes no sense at all. There's no reason why you should get deeper and deeper into debt. Now, you just sit down there and listen to me. You'd better sell the house, Willard. It's the only thing that makes sense. You're not going to lend me the money, Mr. Farley. It's $2,500. Well, my boy, if I thought it would help you, I'd do so. But no, I can't do that. You think about selling the house. Now think about it, Willard. Now you'll have to excuse me because I have someone in the back to take care of. And then I have to make a pickup. Did you have any luck? Luck with what? With, with the money. Oh, Willard, I wish I had some money to give you. <laughs> I couldn't take money from you, Joan. That wouldn't be fair. 
I'll think of something. Walt, I promise you it'll be delivered. But you gotta remember those little pictures back there for me. <laughs> Alice, Mr. Spence is going to Europe tomorrow afternoon, a lucky stiff. And listen, he needs some cashier's checks and some cash. Now, draw up a check for $8,000, take it down to the bank. Yes, Mr. Martin. And here is Mr. Spence's personal check. Put that in the firm's account. Right, but the bank will be closed before I can get there. Well, call them. They'll stay open for me. <laughs> get me half in cashier's checks and a balance in cash. One hundred dollar bills. Isn't that a hell of a lot of cash to be carrying around? Well, <laughs> stick it in my money belt. I always like to have some real cash available. <laughs> for a little wheeling and dealing in that black market, huh? <laughs> hey, I'd like to get a black market on those pictures. <laughs> Can you imagine having $8,000 to spend on a vacation? <gasps> hey, we could really ball it up for that kind of a bankroll, huh, Willard? Oh, oh you got my Rolodex. Give me Spencer's address. Spencer. Wait a minute. Yeah? Spencer Walter T. 1136 Spencer Lane, Hollywood, 90028. Come on, Walter, wake up. Something's scratching. Oh, what? You hear it? Walter, please, Walter, there's something outside the door. Please. Uh, it's just your imagination. But if it'll make you feel any better.
kid's never home. What do we do with the house? Are you kidding? This is a woodpecker's hamburger. You run a bulldozer through it. And where do you get that wee bit? <laughs> yes, sir. I can put close to 40 apartments on this lot. Now, remember, you've got to have one and a half parking places per apartment. I got room, don't worry. Why is that kid still hanging on to this old barn? Because he's a kook. Here, let me, let me look in here. Uh, suppose he won't sell. He'll sell if he's unemployed. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to be in the bedroom. Now, just for that, I am not going to take you to the office tomorrow. Do you hear? Bad! Bad! Go to the cellar. The cellar. You hear? I am sick of your trouble. Ben, did you... Now, how did you get in there? Look, are you going to be good? All right, I'll take you to the office. But if you do one thing wrong, if you make one sound, it's the last time you go. Do you understand? Right. Uh, Mr. Martin wants to see you. Nice family relationship here. Everybody gets along with everybody. <laughs> now, I've noticed lately that uh, you've been seeing a lot of Willard. You object to that? Me? No, sir. <laughs> I should say not. I think it's wonderful. Now, I'm the one that pays you, right? Just exactly what do you want, Mr. Martin? I want you to do me a favor. Help me to help Willard. You can help us both by persuading him to sell me his house. I can't do that. Can't? No. 
or won't. I think you better do your own persuading, Mr. Martin. I think that's the way you feel. Willard? I've just been fired. I I just got my notice. Alice put it on the desk. Did you have a fight with her? Not with her. It's all right, Willard. I, it was just a temporary job. I'll get another one. Notice. Big deal, I get 30 days. Safari on all these rats. <laughs> hey, 
What's the matter, Tiger? Got a little nervous stomach? <laughs> Come on, boy. Let's not take all day. Let's get going. We got a lot of work to do. Hey, Alice, get somebody to clean up that mess. Hey, hey. Come on, let's get back to work. Do you think there are any more of them? Well, if there are, just whistle for me. Listen, uh, open up the office in the morning, will you? Would you like me to stay tonight? That's a good idea. But it's tax season, and I need some private finagling time. There's nothing I could do. Ben, it was. It wasn't my fault. Please just, just get in, and I won't touch you. Ben, they'll kill you if you stay here. Please, they'll kill you. Why didn't you tell me that you owed taxes and a mortgage? You... You told me to talk over my future with your... your friend, Martin. Well... Well, Martin, your friend, wants to take my house and just... just knock it down! Well, I won't let him. Incidentally, he fired me. And if it'll make you feel any better, Socrates is dead. Martin killed him. Just like he killed my father. <laughs> I make the decisions now. I make the decisions now. Hello. My God, look at the rats. Yes. Look at the rats. Not just one anymore. We've come to talk to you. What, are you crazy or something? Watch, Mr. Martin. They do anything I tell them to do. 
You're the one that ruined my party. You crazy... Don't you move. There are a lot more of them waiting. Waiting for what? Waiting for us to finish our talk. Sit down. Now, will it? Mr. Martin, I have a number of things to tell you. First, you stole the business from my father. And second, it killed my mother. And third, you're trying to ruin me. Oh, Willard, what are you talking You never left me alone for a minute. You made a fool out of me in front of everybody, and now you're trying to steal my house. Oh, no, no. I heard you! That's why you're trying to fire me. You, you made me hate myself. I, I, I thought a lot about it, hating myself. Well, I like myself now. You killed my friend. I killed who? How did Socrates feel when you stuck him with this? How did Socrates feel? Well, who the hell is Socrates? Socrates was the best friend I ever had. I don't! <laughs> Goodbye, Ben.
don't want to go home. You can come to my house. Or we could stop and get some food if you have something to eat later, if you'd like. You know, my life has changed now. Two things did it. One was a friend I had named Socrates. And you. What a very nice thing to say, Willard. <laughs> Where's Chloe? Uh, she's hunting. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> Here's to us. To us. You know, tomorrow I'm going to start all over. I'm going to go to your employment agency and see what they can do for me. I'll call them for you. You don't have to. But I'd like to, Willard. No, you don't understand. See, I'm not afraid anymore. I don't know. I think I heard something in the hall. Excuse me. Do something for me. What is it, Will? I don't want you to ask me any questions. I don't want you to complain. I just want you to do it. Well, of course, but what is it? I want you to take this money and I want you to go down to the corner and get a taxi cab and go home but and I'll you there. Now, Will, don't what ask is... me why, Joan. Just, just go. Don't ask. Just go. Okay, I guess we have to make a deal. Now, you came here for food, and you behave yourself, and you'll get it. And so will your friends in the cellar. You understand?